23 on the independent GPS. I'm getting ready to crack open the Muck Pet Suburban. I'm actually not going to include the assembly in this video because Muck Pet actually has a really good thorough assembly video. I'm going to leave a link in the description box to that video. Check that out if you need help in putting this together. Uh, from the looks of it, it's not going to take long. It might take me 15, 20 minutes. I do want to show you how uh, the bike comes packaged though. So that's why we're here in the garage. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so taking a look at the box, the only thing I can see in terms of damage is this right here. Start taking the components out and placing them here in the garage. There's the seat. Seat feels cushy but firm, actually. We can see that there are markings here. This is a big bike, you guys. All right, there's the back rack. Okay, not sure what that is. It's heavy. I think that's the battery. <laughs> you can see, it looks like uh, the bike was carefully packaged. Lots of foam in here. Keep it from moving around. And I imagine I'm gonna have to lift this sucker on up out of here. I am excited. Couple more things in the box here. Looks like the pedals and some tools, and I imagine that is the charger. All right, do another check of the box. All right, we got something. Looks like it's falling off. See that? It looks like uh, one of the shifter covers. Hopefully it didn't break off and we can just pop it back on. All right, let me make an observation here. So if you've never seen a bike with 26 inch tires up front, <laughs> you just don't realize how big these tires are. And they're four inches wide. These are the biggest bike tires I've ever seen in my life. These, <laughs> these are huge. So uh, one thing to note, if you're looking for bikes online, which is what a lot of people are doing nowadays with these e-bikes and not going to a bike shop. I highly, highly recommend finding a bike shop just to see a similar sized bike to the one you may be shopping for online so you can get a sense of the size. This thing isn't even put together yet and it's, it, it looks humongous. I am geeked because I'm, I'm a bigger guy. I'm excited for this, you guys. So. I've been wanting to get into electric bikes for a few years now. I had the opportunity to review a couple of mini electric bikes, but I really wanted to get a hold of a full size electric bike. This is what you call a full size electric bike, y'all. This thing has 26 inch by four inch wide fat tires and this is a big boy bike right here. Now me telling you and showing you the size of these tires on video here really doesn't do it justice. These tires are huge, man. I, I love it, I love it. So this size tire should allow you to get through all different types of terrain. It accommodates riders from five foot six all the way up to six foot four. I'm six foot two, six foot three, somewhere in there, and it fits me wonderfully. And actually, I had to put the seat down a little bit further than I thought I would, just so my feet could touch the ground. So this bike right here, it's a big one, y'all. It's a big one. Now, the other thing about having tires this big is they could be more susceptible to getting flats, you know, because there's more area touching the ground. Uh, but get yourself some of that green slime. Uh, put that in your tires. I haven't put it in, in mine yet, but I definitely will. That should uh, help to minimize flats for tires this big. Now this is a class three electric bike with a top speed of 25 miles per hour. And we're definitely gonna test that out in our ride test. It's going for $649 out there on Amazon, which is an amazing price. But keep in mind, there is a $200 shipping fee. So you might as well price this one out at $849. 
$849. And for what you're getting, that's that's budget, okay? We'll consider this a budget electric bike, fat tire electric bike, y'all. Now with that in mind, you're not gonna get the top tier components, but overall, I think the components on this bike, the materials used are pretty good, pretty good for that price point. Okay, so I mentioned the size of the rider that this bike will accommodate. Uh, let me show you how high the seat can go and how low it can go. Where it's placed right now is good for me and it can even go higher. So let's go ahead and there are markings on the seat post. So to right about there is the highest the seat can go. That's too tall for me. Oh, I meant to show you how low it gets as well. So let's take it all the way down. So that's how low the seat gets, all right? Now let me put it back to where it was. All right, the handlebars don't raise or lower at all, but you can adjust them in terms of the angle. So you can angle them forward or backwards just for a more comfortable uh, riding position. All right, now I'm gonna highlight some of the specs that I think you'll be most interested in. Um, we'll take a close up look at the bike and the components, and then we'll get out and do that ride test. All right, let's go. Okay, so the Muck Pet Suburban has a 750 watt rear hub motor with 80 Newton meters of torque. So more than enough power to get up hills and getting up to that top speed. But I'll let you see all of that for yourself in a little bit and take note of the protection here that's gonna protect the gear mechanism right here just in case the bike tips over. So that's a really, really nice touch. It comes with a 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery and it has a power level indicator right on the battery. As you can see right here, let's press that button there and you can see it light up. It also gives you battery level on the display, but it's nice that you can check it right from the battery. That's really, really nice. Advertised range is 45 miles in pedal assist one and they actually advertise it that way and that makes sense, right? You'll get less range when you use more power in the higher pedal assist level. We're gonna see what kind of range I actually get. And for reference, I'm six foot two and 200 plus pounds. So the size and weight of the rider definitely plays a role in how much range you can actually get. So keep that in mind. And speaking of weight, the bike has a maximum load of 330 pounds and it comes with a nice bike rack here in the back, which looks pretty sturdy. Nothing in the materials um, tells you how much weight the rack can actually accommodate, um, but you know, groceries, um, one of those paneer bags, um, you know, it should be able to accommodate something like that with no trouble. The bike itself weighs 62 pounds and without the battery, it's actually pretty light to carry. It's just big. It has 180 millimeter mechanical disc brakes on the front and back. And once again, 26 inch by four inch Chow Yang fat tires. You've got suspension in the front and it's indicating that there is 80 millimeters of travel. You cannot adjust these at all, so there's no lockout or anything like that, but it's nice to see some kind of suspension. There is no suspension in the rear. The bike has front and rear lights and to power those on, you're gonna press and hold the plus button for a couple of seconds. You will see the light indicator show up on the display and the rear light is also a brake light, which I think is awesome for a bike at this price point. Okay, let's talk about the control system. So you can see here on the left side, you've got a three button panel here. You've got a plus and minus and you have a power button to power on the bike. We're gonna press and you can see there is a nice color display, which I was really surprised to see. And it's really bright. It's bright out here right now. And um, I can see that display just fine. All right, now if you wanna get into the advanced settings, you need to press and hold the plus and minus buttons at the same time. The manual provides a pretty good legend on what each of the levels represent. So you'll know what you're changing. So you can change things like um, whether it's giving you miles per hour or kilometers per hour. You can change the top speed, um, things like that. A bunch of other things you can do in there. And the bike also has walking mode. So if you need some assistance, either, I don't know, walking up a hill or crossing the street or something like that, just press and hold the minus button 
and the bike will give you some power, low power, but it will give you some assistance as you're walking alongside the bike. And I won't go into too much detail with the display, but as you can see, you've got your energy bar here at the top, you've got your speedometer, your pedal assist level, and you can see what happens when you change that. There's five pedal assist levels. Okay, you've got your odometer right here. And if you just single press the power button, you can see how that changes uh, to trip, voltage, current, time, and then we're back to the odometer. Okay, it comes with a seven speed Shimano gear shifter. Now, the bike I was sent, the shifter, the top of the shifter was broken. So this cap piece was off in shipping. I believe it got damaged in shipping. The company actually sent me a replacement, but you know, to replace this, you gotta rewire it and everything. So I just said, forget it. The gears do change. I just don't know which gear it's in, okay? So keep in mind, in shipping, sometimes things do get damaged. That's why I uh, showed you the packing, how the bike was packaged. Very, very important aspect of getting these uh, bikes in the mail. And you can see the throttle here on the right hand side. Got the rubber grips here. Now mine are moving a little bit. Um, I believe you can remedy that with like hairspray or something like that. But I find this to be really, really comfortable when I'm resting my hands. I do ride with uh, gloves, uh, padded gloves, which helps as well when you're riding for a long time so your hands don't start to get tired. But um, I feel, feel like these grips are really good. It's just some kind of rubber material, rubber-like material. Um, they're they're kind of soft, but stiff, uh, if that makes sense. So I find this to be really, really comfortable. I have the handlebars set up uh, where I can kind of um, sit in more of a straight position. So it's really, really comfortable riding position for me. So you do get fenders with this bike. They are like vinyl, they, they aren't metal, but they do the trick and they look nice. They don't look um, cheap or anything to me or off-putting. I think they really fit this bike overall. So I, I'm glad to have these rather than having nothing at all. Now I want to show you the cable management on this bike. I feel like it's pretty good. So there's uh, cables running uh, along the bike and when you do your um, assembly, you'll have to uh, do some of that um, cable management. Um, they do provide zip ties and such for doing that. But I want you to kind of just see here, um, the only place that I would have concern is right here, sort of underneath. Um, the bike um, but if you tie those down really well I don't I don't see that being a problem but pretty clean overall and you can see where um, the cables are running through the frame and then you can see overall here so pretty clean as far as I'm concerned I'm pretty impressed by this bike and the price of it now I've already put about 30 miles on this bike and the seat is really comfortable. All right, let's take a closer look at the battery now. You do get uh, two keys, and you can see here, this is basically how you lock and unlock the battery uh, in order to remove it from the bike. So right now, it's in the lock position. We're gonna turn counterclockwise, you'll hear it click. Now you can just slide the battery off the bike, as you can see here, okay? And very easily and simply, you slide it back on in and down, and you're gonna turn clockwise and lock it back in place. And that thing's not going anywhere. The kickstand here is adjustable. You just need to turn this dial here, and that will allow you to make adjustments to the kickstand. Full-size pedals, I feel like these are nice and wide. You've got little divots here to kind of help with uh, your feet not slipping or your, your shoes not slipping. And I also want to show you some of the welds. So check that out. And uh, I'm not a professional welder. <laughs> to me, these look good, but hey, some of you guys may think differently if you're, you know, a professional welder or something like that. But there you go. 
Okay, y'all, let's get this thing on the road and see what it can do. Here, let's go ahead and do the speed test. Now, something I've noticed is it takes a little while for this to get up to the top speed. Another thing I noticed, I have the uh, GPS speedometer here. Let's see if I can tilt this down so you can see. Uh, I may have to tilt it a little more. Okay, so you can see that. All right, so I have my independent GPS speedometer here uh, just to keep the um, bike speedometer honest. Actually, what I've noticed is they both keep pace, but once the bike gets to its top speed, the bike reflects a slower speed than the GPS. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Let me show you what I mean. Five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, I'm gonna put a clock up in the upper left-hand corner. That's going to track how fast it takes us to get up to the top speed of 25 miles per hour. 21, 23, on the independent GPS, 24, and 25. And as you can see, the bike speedometer is not reflecting that top speed. But the independent GPS, I can, you know, I can trust that the bike did reach that top speed. So uh, not really sure what's going on there, but um, as far as I'm concerned, the bike does reach the advertised top speed of 25 miles per hour. It is a class three electric bike with a top speed of 25 miles an hour. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do our hill test. So this is a pretty steep uh, grade here. I fully expect the muck pet Suburban to get up here, no problem. But let's go ahead and test it out. We are in pedal assist five, and I'm just going to pedal Resuming. with no throttle. And like I said, I fully expect this 750 watt motor to handle this hill with absolutely no trouble. So far, so good. We are at eight miles an hour. And I'm definitely giving it some, some of my own foot power. But we are getting up this hill no problem. I'm going to go ahead and turn around. So that is a success. We're going to do it one more time. This time we're going to do throttle only. All right, and see how that does. But uh, yeah, this... This bike has plenty of power to get you up hills like that. And I'll see if I can find another hill as well that we can test. But we're going to go ahead and throttle only now. And cruising, we're at 13 miles an hour. 12, 11, <laughs> and we actually have more power this way than when I was pedaling. Nine, eight, all right, and power to spare, you guys. So <laughs> you won't have any problem with a hill like this on this bike. Okay, so we're losing light, it's getting dark, so I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna wrap this up for today. I'm gonna head home. And uh, we'll come back out tomorrow and finish up the, uh, the test. And I do have Strava going. So, uh, because when you shut down the bike, it will reset the trip. Strava says we've gone 6.13 miles so far. And the bike says 4.6, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Okay guys, here's the plan. So we're gonna ride down to the center of town and do our tests, uh, remaining tests. We're gonna do a uh, pedal assist mode test. So we're gonna check the speed in each pedal assist mode. We'll also test the bike out with no pedal assist. We're gonna do our brake test 
uh, and I didn't do a throttle only speed test. So we'll get that done as well. So let's go. We have already ridden, um, I believe it was about 8.4 miles or so the other day. I did not charge the battery. So we are picking up right where we left off uh, because the other thing that we are going to be determining is range. Uh, so I am six foot two, six foot three, six foot two, six foot three. I am over 200 pounds. Keep that in mind because the size and the weight of the rider does impact range and actually the zippiness of the bike itself. And if I haven't mentioned this already, I can't remember if I did since I'm doing this uh, video in over a course of multiple days. Uh, but if I haven't mentioned already, one thing I've noticed is the bike will definitely need um, the derailleur adjusted. Uh, it does kind of get in between gears sometimes. Um, it, you know, it, it does correct itself after a while. A little bit of a cloudy day here today, but uh, about 70 degrees. I probably could uh, use a jacket, but I'm comfortable in my t-shirt and shorts riding along here in late September. And uh, I am wondering whether I will attempt to ride during the winter months, uh, specifically on days where it's mostly dry. So I would be contending with the cold more so than the actual snow itself. Looks like our battery is a little bit above half right now. So do our speed test while we still have good power. And then after that, we will get into the each pedal assist mode from a stop. Pedal assist five, throttle only. Let's see if we can, we can do the speed test. Throttle only, up to 18, 23 now. Back down to 19, 21, 23, 24. We did hit 24 briefly. Yeah. So here's my hypothesis that the speed threshold throttle only is around that 20 mile an hour mark. You will get the top speed in pedal assist. And actually, I have had to use pedal assist and throttle to reach that 25 mile an hour top speed. Now that has been my experience. I can't speak for anyone else. Um, but that has been my experience with this bike. All right, now here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and put the bike in pedal assist zero. So there's no throttle, no throttle and no pedal assistance right now. We'll just stay on the sidewalk here. And I am pedaling, I'm going to gear down all the way as far as I can go. There we go. Much better. And I will say if I had to pedal this bike on a flat surface for a longer distance, say if I ran out of battery, it wouldn't be so bad. Now it's when you get to hills and such is when you may have uh, a little bit of a struggle. But I'm up to let's say nine miles an hour eight nine let me give it a little more foot power here up to 10 11 and i'm working a little bit but not too bad so not too bad in pedal assist zero with no assistance at all from the motor all right let's switch it over to pedal assist one now Pedal assist one, and 
Let's start pedaling. Okay. I'm going to actually give it some throttle as well. So it looks like in pedal assist one, we're up to, my GPS says eight miles an hour. Eight, nine. Eight, nine miles an hour. Okay, up to pedal assist two now. <laughs> I felt a little bit of a jolt there. And we are up to, we'll call it 11 miles an hour on the GPS. 12, hovering between 11 and 12. I'll call it 11 here. All right, up to pedal assist three now. 14. All right, 15 there. Okay, we'll call pedal assist three, 15 miles an hour. Okay, pedal assist four. We are up to 15, 16, 17, 17 miles per hour, 18 now. And this is actually throttle only, so 18 miles an hour. And pedal assist four. And of course, pedal assist five will take you on up to the top speed. And why not? Let's get in the bike lane here and let's take this baby up to the top speed once again. Let me gear down. Okay, 23. We're only up to 23 here today. Let's try that again. You need a lot of room to get this thing up to speed. And we are running out of battery, actually, so that might have something to do with it. We are actually below half, well, right at half now. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, keep riding here. And um, our purpose, one of our main goals here is to run down this battery and see what our full range is. And I have been riding, um, I have been pedaling this entire time. So I'm not relying solely on the throttle. We are at four bars now. So I think I am going to start making my way back towards home. I have put a total of 41 miles on the bike. We've been riding for 37 minutes. We've ridden seven miles and my buttocks feel just fine. So the seat is rather comfortable. Yeah, overall great bike <laughs> is my assessment. Now, one thing I have noticed is my, the back of my foot has been hitting on, not real sure what it's hitting on there. I think it may be, part of the frame in the back that the back of my foot hits on sometimes. So I have been more cognizant of that as I'm riding, uh, where I'm placing my foot. Um, but other than that, no other annoyances for me. I think I mentioned before, or maybe I didn't, that the Hand rests do move a little bit. Um, I believe that is easily remedied. I'm not hearing any, you know, rattling sounds. Uh, now, the noise from the tires, that is a bit prominent and that's going to be, you know, the case with these knobby tire, uh, knobby tires, you know. There is going to be a little bit of road noise, but that's actually a good thing because, uh, Pedestrians will hear you coming, so that's a good thing. 
Um, this bike did not come with a bell, but you know, you can, you can get cheap bells for five, five, ten bucks. I still have good power. Let's see. Yeah. Still have really good power on this bike. It's propelling me forward really nicely. And we've been riding for almost an hour now. So we're going to do this really quickly. We're going to get up to speed and we're going to use the lines here and stop. I started my braking at that first line. Let's try it again. That was all rear brakes. We're gonna do it again this time with both rear and front brake stopping power. Getting up to speed here. And brake. Much better, much better. I say the brakes are pretty good on this bike. Uh, like I said, 180 millimeter disc brakes. These are mechanical disc brakes, but uh, I have not had a problem with them at all. Okay, let me show you this. So you can see on the bike display, we have three bars. See there? Three energy bars. Let's see what the LED readout on the actual battery itself shows us. It's essentially three bars. So, so we did this hill before on a full battery. Let's go ahead and try it again on a, a darn near empty battery and see. I feel like I, ha I still have really good power um, from this battery. So we'll, we'll just see how well it does on this hill. Okay, we are in pedal assist five. We are going to Resuming. pedal up this hill. I'm actually gonna take the gears down and I'm gonna try it without using the throttle this time. So pedal assist five and we're just gonna go up the hill here. Eight miles an hour. Bike is having no problem at all. I'm pedaling, but I'm getting so much assistance from the bike, it just feels like I'm pedaling on flat um, flat land. So plenty of power from this 750 watt motor, even down to one bar. All right. We're going to do it again. And this time I'm going to use throttle. Okay. Pedal assist five. We're going throttle only. I am not going to pedal at all. Let's see what the bike does. Okay. Nine, 10, picking up speed. Picking up speed to 11. All right, we're slowing down now. Down to eight. Kind of holding steady at eight. That energy bar is flashing now because we are using some juice. Okay, maintaining at eight, seven now. Seven miles an hour. This is all the bike right now. Down to six now. Okay, yep, and it definitely will get you up this hill all by itself. There's that last little bit. I think the, I think the battery is dead now. Hold on. <laughs> nope, it still has some juice. It's getting there though. It's definitely low now. I can feel it. That took a lot out of it. So uh, I'm going to keep riding it until I see that energy bar flash. That seems to be the indication that it is close to empty. All right. So in total, I rode for a little over two hours and I got 23.77 miles out of the battery. Now, Muck Pet says you'll get 45 miles if you stay in pedal assist one, which of course I didn't do. I went all the way up to pedal assist five. I used the throttle and I did several hill climbs. Now with that in mind, I feel like 23 miles is respectable. So I rode this bike pretty aggressively, which is probably how most people would ride. I recently got the Aventon Adventure 2, which is also a 26 by four inch fat tire bike. It's double the price of this bike and has much higher quality components. But if you don't wanna spend two grand on a fat tire electric bike, I can recommend the Muck Pet Suburban as a great alternative without hesitation. I'm gonna be hanging on to this one myself. I'll have a lot more electric bike content coming, 
So make sure to subscribe if you have interest in that, like this video to help improve how it performs, and share with anyone who's interested in getting a fat tire electric bike. I was honestly expecting to find a lot of things I wouldn't like about this, but I just didn't. Well, I appreciate you for watching. Thank you for your support. And as always, be good to somebody, be good to yourself. Later y'all.